and thought that the perfect society had a number of roles. One of them was guards, and uh, there was a question of who will guard the guards. I suppose a question about how do you deal with uh, the mental health of the leaders in a time when they're trying to help uh, others maintain their mental health is a kind of who will guard the guards uh, question. Um, one way is just like when Julie was saying, I think having the humility of understanding that your leadership role does not make you any less human. In fact, one of the biggest problems in humanity, I think, has been uh, leaders who have be been afflicted by unrecognized mental health problems, unresolved mental health problems. Um, we see them, you know, all over the world. Uh, right now, one may say that America is in the grips of a situation like that, but, you know, Idi Amin and all, all many others, yeah, Jamie may come to mind. Um, and the things that they could do, their, 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 their mental health fragility causes them to inflict on entire societies a great amount of suffering. Uh, it's therefore important, I think, for leaders at various levels in communities, in corporate world, etc., um, to have the humility of understanding that your brain is a muscle, a bone, as much and um, part of your body as a muscle or a bone. It does get tired, it does get uh, injured, it can break um, and needs care. Um, we shouldn't be too proud to ask for help. We shouldn't be too proud to go for counseling. Um, we should give people the privilege, find one or two people whom you give the privilege of speaking truth to you and saying, look, you are stressed lately. Uh, you're not uh, yourself in the way that you usually are from my perspective. And when you hand those people that privilege, of course, they shouldn't abuse it. But you should then not just simply say, well, I've heard you and move on. That's an easy way of dismissing things. It should be that if I've given the privilege to Elizabeth and Elizabeth has walked up to me, or Dr. James, and Dr. James has walked up to me and said, David, in all that I've seen you do, I've never seen you do X, Y, or Z. Do you think that you need to take a time out? Do you think you need to take a break? Listen carefully and actually accord yourself the space um, to be able to recuperate. Um, one of the things that I've discovered and tried to work on very hard during the pandemic um, was knowing my family. Uh, one thing, work is very easy uh, to get into, uh, so it's very easy with work to get into a routine that keeps you away from your family for a very long time. The pandemic forced us to work from home um, and forced us into closer proximity with our families. It's very important to be able as a leader to get on with your family. Uh, the other lesson that I learned from this time in terms of mental health is sleep the value of sleep. Um, it's a very important thing. Um, and we may think that by depriving ourselves of sleep, we are accentuating our productivity. We are uh, showing how hard we are. And indeed, you may begin to even write off the amount of sleep that you need, but these are small things that actually uh, impact very greatly. Um, lacking in sleep impacts on your immunity, impacts on many other areas of your life. Um, and mental health is one of them. So I think that the humility of knowing that you, like anybody else, can need and definitely do need to take care of your mental health is an important thing and awareness for leaders and letting some, someone or some people help you as your kind of uh, checkers is a, is, a, is, a, is a valuable thing.